Hi, everyone. Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the all new iPad mini seventh generation or the a 17 pro as Apple calls it. If we take a look at the back, you can see 128 gigabytes. That's what it starts at. It says iPad mini a 17 pro, and it comes in Wi-Fi or cellular. It still has the same price as before 499 goes from 128 to 256 or 512 goes from 499 to 949 and is available in four colors, blue, purple, starlight, and space gray that we have here. Now let's go ahead and open it up. So we'll take off the little pull tabs here and see what we've got. This is basically the same box we had before. It doesn't look like they've made any changes here just to the back of the box where it says a 17 pro with Apple intelligence. And here's the iPad. So iPad in space gray, as you can see here, let's set that aside. We'll see what we've got in the box. So at least we have a charger, but we'll take a look at that in a moment. Nothing else in here. We've got the quick start guide and then a little warranty card, no stickers. Let's place this away inside. We have a braided USB-C to USB-C cable. I'm glad Apple's adding the braided cables basically to everything. And then we also have an adapter. So you can see here, this is a 20 watt adapter and that's what's included. At least they're still including it. It's basically the same box we had before as well. Let's close this up here and let's take a closer look at the iPad. So we'll go ahead and unwrap this here. Now on the back, the differentiating factor here is that it says iPad mini. The previous generation does not say mini on the back. In fact, I have it nearby and you can see it here. So it says iPad. Now it says iPad mini. As far as the overall design, it's pretty much the same as before. We have our power sleep wake button at the top, along with our touch ID or fingerprint sensor. We have two speakers. One of these is a resonance chamber. We also have our volume buttons on the top as well. On the right hand side, we have our attachment for our Apple pencil that will allow it to charge as well. We'll compare this in just a moment. And then on the bottom, again, our speaker grills along with USB C and this time it's actually USB 3.1 at 10 gigabits per second. That's an advantage we get from the new chipset. On the left hand side, we don't have anything at all. On the back, we have a 12 megapixel F 1.8 camera, just like we did before it records in 4k 60. As far as video has smart HDR four this time up from three and then the front facing camera is the same as well. So right here we have a 12 megapixel F 2.4. It records at 1080p 60. No change there. Now compared side by side with the other one, you'll see side by side. It's basically the exact same thing dimensions and all. And you can see that here. So this looks like it may be the area for the pencil is slightly thinner, but the overall size is identical as far as the thickness and everything else. So the little area for where the pencil attaches is slightly different since it uses a different one. It looks like, but everything else looks basically the same from the top to the sides. We'll move it around here from the sides here to the bottom. Everything's identical. So no changes there as far as the way it looks. Now let's go ahead and turn it on. So we'll boot it up there. And as it's starting up, we'll place the old case on it. So this is actually from the sixth generation iPad mini. So if you have one of those cases, it will work just fine. It will attach no problems. It's stuck on the back and no issues here. So it's booted up. Let's go ahead and get it set up. So we'll tap English. Then let me bring in a phone to get it paired. It's connected. Let's go ahead and pair it using the camera. It says waiting for iPhone. We'll get this set up using the iPhone and we'll just set this up as new. We'll get it set up for me. Then we'll put in the password from the iPhone it says it may take a few minutes to activate your iPad. So we'll give it just a moment here. Now it says there's a software update. We'll do this later so we can see what version it was installed with. We have to agree to the data and privacy. We'll hit continue. Then we have to set up touch ID. So let's go ahead and do that. Just place our finger on here, get this set up quickly. I always appreciate this on iPad. However, on the iPad, it works really well with face ID. However, touch ID definitely is something many people would welcome on many devices. Still it says capture all of your fingerprints. So now we'll just move it around a little bit more from different angles. And there we go. It's added. Now we could add another fingerprint, but we'll tap continue or we'll hit cancel. We'll tap continue and it will set up the account. I don't want to add another finger at this point. 
Now it says signing in to Apple ID. We have to agree to the terms and conditions. Now, as we're waiting for this, this actually has the same display as before, but it may not have the jelly scrolling. We'll check that a little bit later once this is all set up, but this has an 8.3 inch display, 2266 by 1488 at 326 pixels per inch. It has an anti-reflective coating, goes up to 500 nits of brightness, has P3 wide color, and that's about it. It doesn't go up to a thousand nits, doesn't have the mini LED display, or OLED, which is a bit of a shame at this price point. Internally, we have the new A17 Pro processor with Apple Intelligence, but it has one less GPU core or five cores, and it has a six core CPU. It has less resolution than an iPhone 15 Pro, even though it has a similar chipset with one less GPU. So it shouldn't be an issue. This does have eight gigs of Ram as well, which allows for Apple intelligence. That's the big differentiator here with the non pro iPhone 15s, apparently where you need eight gigs of Ram to run that smoothly. So again, let's wait for this to set up and then we'll continue. It should be just about done. It says, enjoy your new iPad on the iPhone there it completed. And it says, make this your new iPad. So let's go ahead and go to continue or customize rather. And we don't want to transfer anything. You could of course restore this from a backup, but let's go ahead and not transfer anything. And then we'll just tap continue. We'll have it only download automatically. I'll enable location services. It's asking if I want to continue the beta program, not on this device for now, since we're setting it up as new. And now it says, welcome to iPad. This is the default wallpaper that it came with. So that's what this looks like. Let's take a look at what version we have on it. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about. You'll see this comes pre-installed with iPad OS 18 with version 22A 8350 for the build number. If we go ahead and go back, let's go to general, go to software update, give it just a moment. You'll see we have a day one update where it's fixing a few things. So performance may be impacted due to an issue with memory allocation on some iPad models, and it fixes issues with messages, just like we had with iOS 18.0.1. We have support for two different Apple pencils this time, USB-C, the new one that's a little bit less expensive, and then also the Apple Pencil Pro. So the Apple Pencil Pro works a little bit better with tilt sensors and more. You don't necessarily need it, but it will charge right from the side here. So if we pair it just like that, you have the squeeze gesture, and then you can switch tools with the gesture. You can try the squeeze so you can hover over and squeeze it then tap continue. And then you can scribble. Of course, this is something we've had for a while and now we're in, so we can use the Apple pencil with it. We can bring up different gestures if we go into notes. So scroll down, continue, then we'll go into a new note and then we can draw as we want, squeeze it. And we've got our little toolbar here. So just like we have on the other iPad, this supports it. It also supports hover. So if we go over, you might be able to see that little dot there as I hover over the top of it, squeeze it. And then again, I can hover over and you can see things expand as I'm moving over it without touching it. Now we'll check the jelly scrolling in just a moment, but I want to get this updated to make sure that it actually has all of the latest updates and it fixes anything that it may have. However, this does have 10 hours of battery life surfing the web on Wi-Fi or watching video and wirelessly it has 5g support, but it's eSIM only this time around. We also have Wi-Fi 6E support and Bluetooth 5.3. Those are all thanks to the A17 Pro. So let me go ahead and unlock it and let's get it updated. The iPad's been updated to iPadOS 18.0.1, so we're good to go there. And let's take a closer look at things such as the wallpaper. So if we go down to wallpaper, we'll add new wallpaper and you'll see what we have here. iPadOS, we have collections, which this is the new iPad mini and basically the same thing we had before. So they really haven't updated this a whole lot, really giving us basically what we had previously. So if we add this version, it's the same as iPad OS 18. We'll go ahead and add it. And now we're updated to the latest wallpaper that matches what we have right here on the box. Basically a little bit more vibrant colors though. Now, as far as the overall speed, well, basically this is going to be the same. It was promised with Apple intelligence that doesn't come out for well, about another half a week or so at this point, probably next Monday that will bring Apple intelligence features to this. So this will support it. If we go into Geekbench six, give it a second to load here. You'll see, we do in fact have eight gigs of Ram. So 7.73 and it's running at 3.78 gigahertz. Let's go ahead and run some benchmarks. 
see what they get. And this just did install everything as far as iPad OS 18.0.1, but it's barely warm on the back as this runs, as it sort of intensifies the overall processing. Let's take a look at the overall heat. It's some, as some people are concerned about that it's barely warm to the touch at all. So we're still running benchmarks. I've let it run for a little bit. We have the thermal camera here, and this gives you an idea of what it looks like. So the processor must be somewhere in this area. And according to the FLIR thermal camera, we're at about 35.5 degrees Celsius. So not terribly warm and just to the touch, it's barely warm at all. So around 35 degrees Celsius, nothing too concerning there. I wouldn't really be concerned about it anyway. And it seems to be dissipating heat well, but that gives you an idea of where the processor is and how it's getting rid of heat. Benchmarks completed and we have 2,734 for single core, 6,506 for multi-core. Compared to the iPhone 15 Pro Max that we have here, this gives you an idea. You can see that it definitely must have one less core as we have 6,807 for multi-core and 2,828 for single core. Now keep in mind, I just installed an update, so that could change a little bit, but it's plenty fast and again should run Apple intelligence without a problem. Now, as far as jelly scrolling on this, well, let's go ahead and maybe go to Apple. As you can see at 240 frames per second, it does not appear that the jelly scrolling is fixed. In fact, if I slow it down to 10% of that, you can actually see each side of the screen refresh at different rates. It looks identical on both displays, whether it's regular icons or text or anything else. So it looks like it really isn't fixed and it's something that they haven't addressed with this particular iPad, at least from what I'm seeing. When it was in horizontal mode, it seems to be fixed just like it was before based on the overall scroll screen, scroll of the screen. But in general, it does not appear that it was resolved in this particular update. The jelly scrolling may be a little bit less severe on the new iPad. As I scroll through this page, you'll see it seems to be at the same scroll speed, but maybe there's some differences there with the overall processor helping it out a little bit, but it's definitely still there. And if that's something that bothers you, it will bother you on the new iPad. As far as overall contrast and the display itself, it looks to be very similar. So side by side, these are at the same brightness level. Maybe the new one is slightly more contrasty, but it looks pretty much the same to me. I don't think there's much of a difference here at all as far as the display is concerned. Now let's go ahead and take a listen to the speakers, see if they sound any different as well. I have both iPads ready to go with royalty free music. Let's go ahead and take a listen to the older iPad first, and we'll try and measure the decibel level using the Apple watch. Here's the new iPad mini. Now the speakers sound identical to me on both iPads, both have decent sound at high volume, about 83 to 84 decibels seems to be their peak according to what we were measuring. And they sound pretty clear with decent bass thanks to the resonance chambers, but I don't think the speakers are any different this time around. And one of the things I was a little bit disappointed with is the actual jelly scrolling. It seems like it still has it despite some others saying it doesn't under slow motion, it looks like it definitely does. So that's something that may still bother some people, but let me know what you think of it in the comments below. There's not much more to say about this. We'll get Apple intelligence within a week or so. Then we'll have all the features with the new Siri. We'll have writing tools, updates to photos with cleanup and more, but that's about it for the new iPad mini. No new screen, which is something I'm surprised they didn't update. And we still have fairly large bezels. However, I don't think that's a bad thing as you can sort of hang on to this without covering the display as much, but this is definitely still something I think people are going to be very happy about since it's the latest iPad sort of chipset and you can continue to use the smaller iPad mini. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. If there's anything else you want to know about the iPad mini a 17 pro version, I'd love to hear from you as well. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.